I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us here on Closing Arguments. We have a big hour tonight. Wait till you meet our tank. You'll recognize them, but I'm not going to introduce them just yet, folks. Let's get to our first story. And we're talking about the Long Island serial killer, the suspected Long Island serial killer. He's under arrest now, and we're learning more and more about the investigation and the evidence in this case. Let's take a listen. Uh, he was on CNN. This is Rodney Harrison. He's the Suffolk County Police Commissioner who spoke at the initial press conference, now giving us even more information. This investigation is still ongoing. Uh, the task force will remain intact. Uh, we'll continue to uh, search and follow any types of tips that may come in the Crime Stopper hotline or things that we may recover that may lead us in another direction. But uh, he's definitely somebody that uh, I'm, I'm glad that we got off the street. Uh, compliments to the men and women of the task force, but uh, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. So it's going to take a, a little time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the time frame is, but uh, uh, because the uh, hair follicle was somewhat damaged, uh, and trying to match the DNA uh, connected to the hair, it may take uh, longer than we, we anticipate. But uh, if it does come back as a match, then we'll definitely charge him uh, with the murder to Mrs. Barnes. The case was in the grand jury, and we were looking for that indictment. And there was a belief that possibly some of that information might have gotten out. So uh, in order to uh, make sure it didn't get to our, our subject, Rex Harriman, uh, we thought that was important and imperative to move, on, move in on him uh, that day. When we initially uh, informed them about uh, their, their husband, their father, uh, they, were, they were shocked. Um, they were disgusted. Uh, they were embarrassed. Uh, so if you ask me, I, I don't believe that they knew about this double life that Mr. Harriman was, was, was living. But uh, you know, time will tell. And once again, there's still a lot more questioning that needs to be done to the family, to friends. Uh, taking a look at some of the calls that are coming in and seeing uh, what information we could gather to see if the family might have known exactly what, what Mr. Harriman was up to. What really stuck out to me was the description of the reaction of the family. They were shocked and embarrassed and disgusted. Wait a minute, how about like, no, 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 you got the wrong guy. My husband wouldn't do that. My, my father wouldn't do that. I mean, to me, that's very telling. If that's an accurate description of the reaction of the family, I mean, if it was like your father or your husband or your dad, it, would that be your reaction? Like, oh, I can't believe he did that? Or would it be like, no, he didn't do that? Wow. Wow. Also, I want to put up on the screen, we've heard from his defense attorney, Michael Brown, has spoken out a little bit, uh, describes his client uh, as 59 years old with no prior criminal history. He's a college graduate. Uh, he's hardworking, licensed architect who has his own New York City firm. He is a loving husband to his wife of over 25 years and an involved and dedicated father to his daughter and stepson. He has entered a not guilty plea and has insisted he did not commit these crimes. There is nothing about the accused killer, he uses his name, that would suggest that he is involved in these incidents. Incidents? These are murders. And while the, why do defense attorneys do that? It's an incident? No, it's a, it's a horrible murder. And while the government has decided to focus on him, despite more significant and stronger leads, we're looking forward to defending him in a court of law before a fair and impartial jury of his peers. Wait a minute. D his hair was in the burlap of three of the victims, potentially a fourth, or waiting to get the test back on that. So really, there's, there's, some, there's stronger evidence than that? Let's unveil and reveal the, thank, the think tank tonight. Joining us live in studio, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, former CIA officer Jack Rice is with us. Also joining us, of course, Court TV anchor Judge Ashley Wilcott working overtime tonight. And finally, the man behind the glasses, criminal defense attorney Josh Schiffer. <laughs> uh, great to have everyone here. Do you know each other? Do you guys? Yeah, we've we've met. Met. We've met. Have John. you met? Maybe we've met once before. Okay. <laughs> I'm willing to associate with this <laughs> group <laughs> for you. <laughs> All right. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the family's reaction? Because I was. I do. Yes, please. I do. So I have to wonder if anyone, when I heard that, all I could think was, or did it all make sense to them? Did they say, wait a second, everything's now falling into place about what he's been doing, where he's been, how he's been acting. Oh my God, I'm disgusted, it's him. Uh, it's a really valid point. 
like, I, I keep trying to reverse roles with these family members. Officer, knock, knock, knock. Hey, I'm Officer Johnson. It's a pleasure to meet you. Let, let me talk to you here about your dad. By the way, he's got the DNA of the same guy in the burlap sack with the three dead bodies and possibly the four. You freak out, right? Yeah. yeah you freak out. It's fair. At the same time, I like the description that the defense attorney gave because the defense attorney basically described middle America, and it's accurate. This gentleman, before you and I have seen the evidence, appears to be a pretty normal, successful wait, until you felon. get to the first 10 guns, or wait, is it 50, or is it the sex doll? <sighs> yeah. It's going to be one of those that I think is going to make me go, no, this, this may not be the guy that have I thought seen, Have was. you seen the house? Like, the, the whole yeah, neighborhood the is nice, except for his house. He's an architect. His. Yes, he's an architect. You would imagine that the architect is going to have something. Well, he spends it on guns and the sex doll. And, the, and, and perhaps a sex doll. We, we, we haven't seen it yet. And those guns are retirement savings, remember. Oh, is that, that is a collection are? of valuable well, ex artifacts. Explain to me, why do defense attorneys say there's, like, stronger leads out there and all of that? Well, we have to. Come on. I mean, it's in the case like this, do you not care about your own credibility? Like, is there a stronger lead than your DNA is there? Your hair is there. <laughs> well, it's a problem we have here is not just the DNA. We also have all the forensics. The forensics. When you start talking about the phone, you start talking about all of the searches, you start l l talking about all that they're doing in the storage lockers. They may be looking for trophies, all sorts of things. I think at this point, you're simply trying to breathe and see just how bad the Adelaide is. And, and it's was. semantics. Say, of course, say incidents versus murders. It's all semantics with defense attorneys, right? How you say it makes a difference to what the media is like, doing. You, you defense attorney. And remember, yeah. what this really does is show us that the most dangerous six psychopaths out there look like middle America. Mm, I agree. Why are you staring at me? Why are you staring at me? You're a successful, educated dad, husband. You are basically this guy absent your hair being connected with some murders. And his daughter worked with him. That, and, and yet she's not like saying, oh, my goodness, it's not my dad, not my dad. Well, how that? do we know they didn't know something, Vinny? We don't know that right. yet. How do we know that they aren't uh, somehow involved, knew? Of course, they haven't been charged. I'm not suggesting they knew yet, anything yet, yet, but yet. we don't know what they really know. Maybe they've been protecting their father. And that's where I'm getting at, because if I know law enforcement, they're going to set up a squeeze for whatever information they can get. Yeah, but and there's if that something can include else. kids and Spouses. Yeah, but there's something else, too. I mean, there is compartmentalization out there. There's people who do all sorts of things in little boxes, and then they put it up on the shelf, and then they'll come back, and they'll live a different kind of life when they're at home. So we do have that happen. And so it's very possible that you have family members well, who have no idea what people are doing once they walk out the front door. You know door. you're on Golden TV, State right? Killer. Oh, <laughs> there's an example. Let's take yeah, example. Can, yeah. can we listen to a little bit more of Rodney Harrison, right, from Suffolk County Police, talking about the searches and... and what they found. Why this door was in the house, uh, uh, once again, we'll have to get down to the bottom of it uh, as the investigation comes, uh, comes to, uh, more, more information comes to our attention. Uh, but yes, the, some of the searches that we saw that he was doing uh, is alarming. It's very, very concerning. And uh, once again, as I, I have to make sure that everybody understands that it's a very good thing that we got this animal off the streets. Let's talk about some of those searches. And, and he mentioned a doll. And what we don't know yet is if it's like a, li a little doll. doll like that. Does, that, does that make it better, Vinny? Not, <laughs> no, just I'm different. Just, hey, I'm not, just, I'm not judging you. I just, just you different. Know. Just different. different. Is it a little doll to saying. like <laughs> entice girls? Or is it like a sex doll to play with down in the basement in his little secret room? Or worse, um, is it a doll that's the age of the people he was searching about on the internet? Or Even is worse. It, or is it all of the above? Oh, because yeah. that's the real problem. And let's not forget, thank you to the pimp that brought this case to the police. Because what everybody's forgetting, without this pimp turning on the police to this individual, he literally turned around and said, Hey, there's this guy you really need to check out about these. Thank you, pimp. Yeah. Thank you for helping solve this crime. Uh, which of these searches uh, bothers you or, 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 you know, impacts your view of him the most, I guess is the way I want to say. Um, I got a bad feeling. Mature escorts, Manhattan. No. Totally no. okay. Eh. 
Teen girl begging for rape porn. Yes. That's a little that's, problematic. That's, that's a bad look right there. Pretty girl with bruised face porn. Yes. Yeah. Not as much yeah. as the teen. The teen is worse. The age. Ten, right, ten yeah. year old schoolgirl. That's the worst. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the yeah. problem. Yeah. Then you don't recover from yeah. that one. You don't recover from because teen. You think they're going to find more on this guy, Jack? Yes. Yeah, you yeah do? I, I do think they will, because part of what's happening right now is we're seeing a really thorough, careful investigation. Yeah. And the one benefit that they have in a case like this is we're, we're talking about three victims, potentially a fourth, but we're looking at 11. And the thing is, is that may be just the tip of the iceberg. We don't know. And with all of the forensics that's out there, sometimes you need to look at this like a, a, just a thread off of a sweater. You don't know. You can grab one piece and you can start pulling. And when you start pulling, you're going to start grabbing something else, and it's going to start to unravel. And if you do this well, you may see a lot more in a case like this. But, but you're overlooking the saving grace of this case, which is that with this many victims, they're sure to do the right investigation for at least one of them. And they are. I mean, I think that this gentleman is really showing they are following the evidence versus here's the guy, let's pin it all yeah, on him. Yeah, They're doing it the right the way. The superintendent in particular, we were talking about yeah. him earlier, he's really a pro and you can tell. And I appreciate the fact that they're going to come at this and they're going to do it diligently and carefully rather than just simply yep. jumping off a right. cliff. And it has to happen. Rodney Harrison, former NYPD. So here's, here's a couple of people who have encountered or claim to mm. have encountered this suspected serial killer. This is from the New York Post. Um, this is Ali's encounter. I was going for a bike ride over in Brady Park, and he came up behind me, and he asked me what time it was. He was trying to compliment me, asking me if I came here often, asking me my name. He had very dirty clothes on. He popped right out of the woods. Everywhere I went in the woods, he would pop out somewhere. The first time he came up behind me, I felt like breathing behind me. Then he asked me what time it was, and he saw a picture of me and my boyfriend on my phone. So he's just asking me questions. Then when I got my sister on the phone because I got nervous, she had to pick me up. I couldn't even go home from my bike ride. She was so creeped out by the encounter, she later filed a police report. And then here's Dominique Vidal on TikTok uh, talking about him. I networked with him and I got to know him and I had a lot of conversations with him. And I can tell you right now, that me and my boyfriend are not surprised that he's a serial killer. He asks me the first thing about myself and um, he asks back, do you like any podcasts? And I say, yeah, you know, I listen to some comedy, like history ones. And then I used to listen to a lot of true crime, but it's a little dark for me. So I don't really listen anymore. He asked me, do I know about the Gilgo Beach murders? And of course I do. When he goes on to tell me, yeah, that's a serial killer that was never caught in my hometown, my neighborhood where I live and tells me he like the guy killed 10 people and he s might slap you out there and i like make a joke and i'm like yeah you never know who you're talking to anybody could be a serial i could be a serial killer and he laughed at that and i just cannot stop running that conversation over and over in my head and I'm really disturbed. He left a, a huge impression on me of being a very odd, um, unwelcoming person in a networking group full of very kind and fun and funny people. There you go. Um, so she said 10. There's 11 right. bodies. Right. And everybody has an encounter with someone who you describe as odd, who makes you uncomfortable, who's creepy, that you stay away from, that they're Every breathing office. on your neck, and you're like, oh Every my, office. I, I, I hang out with them. Sometimes I know. I'm like, stop breathing on my neck, gentlemen. <laughs> you're taking no, my game. No, but it is true. You, <laughs> I don't think it's a bad, right? <laughs> Well, I don't think I'm, it's... I'm just over by Vinny. I'll be fine over here. Wait, no, I won't. Watch out. Breathing on the neck. No, but I don't think it's fair to go from that to leap to serial killer. And really, what what... We all need to be aware of the fact that life is filled with danger and life is filled with stuff that's hard and we don't understand. But we can't be terrified of every weirdo that's out there in the universe mm. because our weirdos Cautious. sometimes bring a lot of joy and beauty and, and uniqueness to life. What is he talking we about? We don't want to be too scared. <laughs> I'm just letting people. that come in. I just, <laughs> no, hold on. I, I, it, it, it feels, it feels like, you know, 
I, there's a lot of evidence. Well, what else would you like to tell us about that, Josh? <laughs> well, I'm really? But you've represented these guys. I don't and know what you're talking as about. Much Wait, truth if they're representing is, them, they're accused of a crime. <laughs> yeah, as much truth as there is, you got to give him an opportunity to listen. You're such a cynic, Vinny. Jesus. <laughs> Not everyone is guilty of what they're apparently Do you think there's more than one person of? out there responsible for well, what happened on Long Island? Right now, there's actually several people who are saying there are multiple people yeah. who are out there. And so I think the investigation is broader than just this one person. There's always the fear that this could be a copycat. And yet at the same time, there may be, may be other victims who are out there that have not been found as of yet. So the real question is, where does this lead? I'm hoping that there's going to be people who might come forward now that there's somebody who's identified. Now, you may get some people who say, he's a creepy guy. But you'll get those ones out there yeah. who will say things like, you know, when they find the guy who has 10 bodies in his basement, they'll say, well, he was really quiet, but he always had a beautiful lawn or yeah. something. Hey, hey, but listen, that's all you get. This is New York, the greatest city in the world. Half the people there are odd half the people there are of them. weird yeah. go wander around manhattan for a few hours if you reported every weirdo new york police yeah, I think would never in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say yeah. if you're in long island you have any idea yeah, right